Environmental impact assessment is a planning tool whose main purpose is to give the environment its due place in the decision-making process by clearly evaluating the environmental consequences of a proposed activity at the design phase of the project. Strategic environmental assessment, on the other hand, considers environmental objectives at higher levels of decision-making, facilitating consultations between authorities on policy, plan and program formulation. It strengthens and streamlines project EIAs by analyzing cumulative and indirect effects of projects and activities. Ideally, an SEA is conducted before a corresponding EIA is undertaken, which means that information on the environmental impact of a plan cascades down through the tires of decision-making and is used in an EIA at a later stage, reducing the amount of work to be done. EIA was implemented in the Dutch legislation on September 1, 1987, while on 28 September 2006, the Dutch government implemented the EU SEA Directive. Here, we investigate the practical implementation of the tool in the Netherlands. So SEA is a more abstract uh, process, uh, less detailed uh, data is available. Um, it is very much looking at um, what and, and if a certain development shall place, take place. Whilst EIA looks at a lot of technical mitigations, uh, looking at how can um, environmental impacts be uh, mitigated um, on a certain, often uh, already uh, fixed uh, location. activity which has been identified as an activity which requires an EIA, because we have legislation that we have lists of activities that require EIA, then that person has to follow, that initiator has to follow the procedure for EI that's laid down in the law. And that starts with the publication of a starting notice. Starting notice, you could, sometimes it's also called the scoping document in international documents. So this, that, that particular publication briefly outlines what the initiator wants to do. What's this project that is being initiated? Where's, where is it going to be situated? And that starting notice already also sketches some of the environmental issues that are going to be likely relevant for that project. And also usually also starts to sketch already some of the alternative options for achieving that same kind of project. There are regulatory guidelines, uh, uh, timelines, sorry, I should say, for, for a lot of the different steps in the procedure. So uh, for, for participation, for how long it takes, there's, there's, the, you know, there's something is announced and there's several weeks for people to have submissions. And then there's a, a moment of public hearing and that formally then closes the participation part. So it doesn't have to be endless because there are regulatory timelines to stick to. The Room for the River project aims at making extra room for the river during periods of flooding by enlarging the river corridor, allowing the water to spread. In the Netherlands, the project was subject to Strategic Environmental Assessment, SEA. One of the sites chosen through SEA is the over Dipsy polder located along the Burmu River. It is home to 16 crop and milk producing farms, a piggery, a marina and a military training ground too. Various plants, birds and animals are found there. The project is designed for a 1 in 25 year return period. In the event of a flood, all infrastructure, animals and birds will be protected. The city of Den Bosch will also benefit from the project. While SEA was conducted at national level, an EIA had to be undertaken at the over Dipsy polder because of the impacts the project would have on the environment. Join us as we tour the area to see SEA and EIA in practice. In demotivatie, omdat het tijdspad te lang duurt. Het is 15 jaar voordat het mee begint, tot het, het project afgelopen is, is zegt dan 15 jaar. En dat is eigenlijk de, ja, de frustratie, want dat is eigenlijk te lang. Maar ik heb het straks al tegen u gezegd, Nederland die, die, uh, ja, die verdringt bekend in, in, in regel en wetgeving en alles moet onderzocht worden. En halve moet, het, moet er rapporten van gemaakt worden. En dan zit je bedrijfvoering zit ongeveer een jaar of 10, 15 op slot. Je kunt niet ontwikkelen. 
En daar moet het nou wel extra zijn, want die 15 jaar die je achterloopt, moet je nu in één keer inhalen dat je dus weer helemaal bij de tijd bent aan 2015 dan. Van nou, uh, ja, het is af en toe ja, zeer frustrerend dat het ja, een heel lange tijd uh, duurt. En met name nou dat je in de onderhandelingen bent met de provincie, dat je, je wil wel snel uh, handelen zodat je vooruit uh, kunt. En dat is af en toe zeer demotiverend. En we proberen natuurlijk ons uh, wel tegemoet te komen, maar ja, dan moet je het zien uh, dat het er ver van op tijd. En die tijd die kost van ons zien gewoon ook uh, geld. De, de merrapportage had voor ons, uh, de muurfectrapportage had voor ons eigenlijk niet veel zin, maar volgens de wet moet er gemaakt worden. Uh, het enige wat wij daar in, uh, in voordeel hadden gezien, dat het uh, anderhalf jaar toe je is, uh, korter had je kunnen, dus het tijdverschil. Dat hadden wij dus wel heel graag uh, beter kunnen benutten om eerder de bedrijven te verplaatsen en te, te, te bouwen. Daar, daar is geen win-win situation. No, no. Uh, daar verandert je niks. Yeah. Ja? Dus ik noem maar iets, vleermuis, ja, ik weet niet, dat willen we zeggen. Yeah. De vleermuizen zitten nu, nu ook in deze bedrijven. Yeah. Straks worden die gesloopt, er worden nieuwe bedrijven en die vleermuizen komen daar weer. Dus yeah. daar da, 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 da gooit niks. De hazen, de konijnen, de rekens, al wat hier loopt, daar blijft hij lopen, want daar verandert niks. But the reason that we have to, we have in Europe in general and in Holland specifically, these, you know, these issues with protected species like this is because of course we're a very densely populated country. There's, we, we are, our nature is under pressure. And this goes for, for a large part of Europe, especially Western Europe as well. So, you know, we can't think lightly of our uh, protected species and protected areas because we have we have few and they're under pressure. So that, that kind of makes it a bigger issue than, like you were saying, the, the issue of ownership of an individual farmer or anything like that. Flexibility of the strategic environment impact assessment. Um, actually, it's it's the opposite from uh, one of the weaknesses that there is a lot of uh, of uh, there is a lack of of, of guidelines and um, uh, what you have to do. Um, the opposite of it is flexible. Relationship between the tool and the objective, and there may be situations where this relationship is a bit uh, screwed where the tool is too strong or too imposing versus the objective that this tool uh, has. What you need to do is include the social impacts in your planning procedure as much as the environmental impacts. So for instance, if you have um, national development plans or even national water plans, then you have to look at not only the environmental impacts, but also look at the social impacts. We know all the methods to put a lot of information in a very structured way in software and make it available to people. The second idea with this was that this whole process would be organized through internet. And I think that is still one of the better ideas to do what you think. Because now even in, in many rural areas of the world where so many people have access to uh, to internet and in part that's actually now being addressed at the moment there's uh, for, for the last couple of years there's been a discussion on how to modernize the uh, EIA and SCA legislation and there's now new proposals that have just about been adopted in in, uh, in parliament and should be uh, coming into to practice you know, perhaps sometime next year but we're still waiting to see the exact outcomes but part of what's being addressed there is this concern about uh, EIA and SCA being costly and time consuming and especially also complaints that have been made in the Netherlands about the procedure being a bit too inflexible so we're now go probably going to go towards a new system where you have for smaller type of projects which have uh, a lesser level of environmental impact, you have fewer requirements for EIA, whereas for more complex projects which have potentially bigger environmental issues, you have uh, some more detailed requirements for, for EIA. So that, 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 the, there's actually an attempt in the Netherlands to address part of these, these issues, these complaints that you might get from initiators. From our findings, we have seen that EIA, SEA, like any other management aiding tool, can achieve its objectives if applied to the relevant situation. It is with eager minds that the Netherlands anticipates a new EIA framework 
for improved environmental sustainability, human security and the Millennium Development Goals.